It is my pleasure, my privilege, and my honor to introduce the 11th president of West Virginia State University, Dr. Anthony L. Jenkins. Thank you, Tom. How are everyone doing today? Well, let me start by saying good afternoon and welcome to the State of the University. It is an honor to stand here before you today as we celebrate the great achievements of West Virginia State University and we outline our pathway forward. As I prepared my remarks today, I considered how much progress we've made together in creating a world-class public university that is committed to access and affordability, that values diversity, offers a quality education, and is an educational and economic driver in the state of West Virginia. As an 1890 land-grant university, State has provided an educational environment that has inspired students to find their passion and empowered them to go out and change the world for more than 125 years. So today, as we turn yet another page in our storied history, I would like to recognize some individuals and groups who have helped to make this possible. These are people who have illustrated an unwavering drive and commitment every day to ensure that State remains a student-centered, exceptional university of higher learning for all people who are willing and wanting to change their lives through education. My deepest appreciation to the West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission and Chancellor Paul Hill. Thank you for your continuing dedication, but not only to our students, but to all students across the state of West Virginia. So would the audience please join me in applauding these outstanding champions of higher education. Thank you. We also have with us today, Chris Walters. Chris, where are you located? As one of our legislative leaders, uh, you are one of the fundamental reasons that state is in a position to provide our students with a quality and affordable education. And we thank you for all of your hard work, not only for our students and for West Virginia State University, but for the state of West Virginia. Please accept my humblest appreciation for your hard work. And I ask the audience to join me in congratulating and thanking him for being here today. Thank you. I would also like to thank our West Virginia State University Board of Governors. In my opinion, the best Board of Governors on the planet. They work diligently for this university, and they have joined us here today, and I would like to recognize them. So as your name is called, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Dr. Ann Brother Smith, Chair of the Board of Governors. Mr. William Lipscomb, Vice Chair. Dr. Paul Gesslaw, Faculty Dr. Tom Gesslaw. Faculty Representative, Mrs. Daisy Squirts, Classified Staff Representative, Mr. Paul Costanti, and Mr. Gary Swing. Please accept my gratitude and my deepest appreciation for your exemplary leadership and the passion that you have for this university and all the wonderful things you do to help us continue to move forward. Will the audience please join me in thanking them for their wonderful work that they do for the university. <laughs> An 
and West Virginia State University shared governance plays an integral role in moving our university forward. Our shared governance team is a team of all-stars. So team, please stand and be recognized when your name is called. And I ask that the audience hold their applause until everyone's name has been called. Dr. Richard Ford, Chair of the Faculty Senate. Elijah Roberts, President, Student Government Association. Robin Tabor, <coughs> Chair, Classified Staff. Members of the President's Cabinet and our outstanding academic deans. Collectively, you have established and achieved a record of profound accomplishments. You are the exceptional example of what a shared governance team should resemble. You put the good of the university before your own self-interest. And I am pleased to have your confidence and your support as we together continue to move state forward. Thank you very much. I would also like to acknowledge my loving wife, Toinette. You are smart, beautiful, a wonderful wife, and a great mother. You have been my pillar of stability, and I thank you for your support and allowing me to serve in this role. Would the university please help me applaud? <laughs> And although they could not be with us today, uh, let me thank my two little commanders in chief, <coughs> Ashley and Alicia. And if I did not get that on the record, I would be in trouble. So they are in school where they should be earning a good education. I am so pleased to stand here before you today and to state with great confidence that the state of the university is strong. But it is no secret that the higher education community continues to face challenging times, not only here in the state of West Virginia, but nationally. State appropriations for <clears throat> higher education continues to dwindle. The financial situation here in the state of West Virginia has resulted in a 16.4% decline in state funding for our university over the past four fiscal years. Across the state, there are growing concerns about the rising cost of a college education. Stakeholders are demanding from us greater accountability and higher outcomes. Here in our own backyard, we have to continue to be mindful that competitors are wanting to expand their academic offerings here in Charleston. While such external challenges are beyond our control, understand and be reassured that state is well positioned to not only survive these challenging times, but to thrive in them. So again, let me be clear. The state of the university is strong. In the face of these issues, we will employ the same resolve that has sustained us for over 125 years. The brand that we have built and the solid groundswell of momentum that we have at our back has resulted in continued enrollment growth, greater investment in faculty scholarship, increased research and grant funding, and an expansion of academic offerings. So today, I want to focus less on a checklist of to-do items and focus more on the presence and our pathway forward. And it begins with our enrollment. State's first year enrollment has grown over the past four years. And this year is no different. We have seen growth and success in both our first time, full time freshman <laughs> cohort and our high school early enrollment program. 
This fall cohort resulted in a 16% increase in first-time, four-time freshmen from 356 last year to 413 this fall. Our high school early enrollment program also yielded significant enrollment growth. We experienced a 48.5% growth in the number of high school students who are taking courses at state this fall. An increase from 839 students last year to 1,246 this fall. We also saw a 9.8% increase in our enrollment of our in-state students, a 10.5% increase for our out-of-state students, and a 60% increase among international students. These accomplishments are a direct result of the hard work of so many across our campus led by our admissions team. <coughs> Today, the total enrollment for state stands at 3,514 students. Those are full and part-time students taking courses at our university. And this represents an 11% increase compared to last fall. Please join me in applauding our admissions team and staff from Academic Affairs offices for all of their recruitment efforts and making this fall possible. <laughs> this fall, we did experience a slight decline in our first time transfer students. That decline went from 234 students last year to 229 this year. Our new graduate student numbers were slightly low as well, 30 from last year compared to 22 this year. But we are currently working on strategic actions to make sure that we can address those shortcomings for the upcoming year. We are also focused on strengthening the academic profile of our students. The academic profile of our first time, full time 2016 cohort was pretty impressive. This cohort averaged a GPA of 3.1, an average ACT score of 20, and an average mean two part SAT score of 8,908. This growth in reputation and enrollment combined with exceptional leadership and stewardship across the university has led to a stronger brand and greater confidence in state by our constituents. And while we should be proud of and motivated uh, of our success, clearly this is no time to pull back on our efforts. The landscape of higher education is evolving rapidly. Fluctuating demographics remain a challenge for years to come. From 2010 to 2022, the overall number of high school graduates is trending downward in our state, thus driving the importance for us to broaden our market and recruitment arms. Just last week, Provost Jazaria and I secured a unique partnership with Ningbo University of Technology, located in China. Beginning in 2017, West Virginia State University will be delivering an undergraduate program in information and computing science for up to 100 Chinese students. Next month, our English as a Second Language program will welcome another 25 Proyecte students from Mexico. Since, <laughs> since beginning our ESL program in 2015, over 160 students from countries such as Mexico, Jordan, 
Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, and Iran have lived and learned English right here in the Institute. And more than 90% of our ESL students have expressed their desire to return and enroll in a degree-seeking program here at the university. Our partnership in China and our strong ESL program are two examples of our commitment to diversity and the value we know it brings to the educational environment and the holistic development of our students. With the launch of our International Affairs Office, look for us to broaden our international footprint and develop an international exchange program that will bring more international students to state and also afford more of our students the opportunity to study abroad. We live in a global economy, and we must prepare our students to work and thrive in a global workplace. But just as vital as our enrollment growth and our expanding our international footprint is our retention and our graduation efforts. We are examining our retention and our graduation rates through a three-pronged approach college readiness, college access, and college completion. This fall, student affairs and academic affairs will co-lead the university's efforts to develop our first ever comprehensive enrollment management and retention plan. And although these efforts will take some time to implement, they are imperative if we are going to move the needle on retaining more students and improving our four and six year graduation rates. And speaking of our four year graduation rates, I will continue to challenge our students, our academic advisors, our faculty, and our staff to support our 15 to finish program. A program designed to shorten degree completion and support our students to earn their college degree in four years. So here at State, we're going to start learning to do math a little differently. Because here, 5 plus 8 will equal 4. 5 plus 8 will equal 4. Students will take not fewer than 5 classes over 8 semesters, positioning them to earn their college degree in 4 years. As president, I am of the opinion that universities must do more than just graduate students. Rather, we have a responsibility to develop graduates who are sensitive to the wrongs and the sufferings and the injustices in our society, and who are willing to accept the responsibility for addressing those ills. I must say of all of our students' accomplishments, I have never been more moved and so proud than on July 1st. That was my first day in office. I spent it in Clendenin, a small town ravished by a thousand year flood just a few days earlier. I am proud of how the Yellow Jacket Nation responded to the call for help. I was standing in the parking lot of what was once the Clendenin Food Fair when I met Dean Paige Carney, and later, many of our students and many more of our faculty. They had come ready to serve. They had their sleeves rolled up. They were committed to help and to change the community. The true essence and the spirit of what it means to be a yellow jacket. <coughs> or our student James Shamblin and our interim provost associate provost, Dr. Scott Wood, who teamed up with the West Virginia Symphony Orchestra to organize the first of its kind benefit concert comprised of professional and amateur musicians. Orchestra of the Hills raised over $11,000 and collected an additional $4,000 in instruments to be donated to flood impacted schools. And Dr. Michael Foltz, 
led an effort to collect equipment for science programs at those same flood impacted schools. Because of his efforts, thousands of dollars of equipment and a cash donation of $25,000 was collected. It was impressive to watch West Virginia State University faculty and students help high school teachers load more than four cargo vans full of equipment right here on this campus. See, our connection to the next generation of Yellow Jackets, it grows daily through outreach by our university extension agents, as well as our student groups who are working in elementary, middle, and high schools. More and more students are learning why state is such a special place. And as a result, they are enrolling. I take great pride in our students. Their accomplishments echo across the state of West Virginia. Like our award-winning criminal justice students who took top honor at the National West Virginia uh, Criminal Justice Educators Association Conference last year. Or the five students who were awarded the prestigious National McNair Scholarship to prepare them for graduate studies. Or our political science students who discuss real issues affecting the Middle East during an innovative U.S. State Department briefing that took place right here in this building. See, these are only some of the opportunities that help bring a record-breaking class of first-time, full-time freshmen to state this fall. And I thank everyone for their efforts and their support. As we look to the future, we must do so with great confidence and a bold vision. I have said before that our trajectory is north, our pace is brisk, and we must have a can-do attitude, a belief that the impossible is possible. And with that perspective, my vision is that West Virginia State University will become a premier regional university that is nationally recognized for its quality education and its excellence in innovative teaching applied research, and experiential learning. This vision is a succinct depiction of what is most important to our community and what we plan to accomplish over the next several years. There are five strategic platforms that highlight how we will go about realizing this vision. We must first continue to strengthen the academic profile of our incoming students. Secondly, we must continue to create a holistic student experience that is fostered by superior campus amenities and dynamic student-centered co-curricular offerings. We must continue to evolve our educational environment into a high-impact integrated learning experience that is inspiring, aspirational, and transformative. We must continue to attract, develop, and retain the best faculty possible. And finally, we must increase our research efforts and become a top tier 1890 land grant research institution. So let me share with you how we are beginning to chart our pathway toward this vision. Under the leadership of Vice President Dr. Orlando McMeans, this fiscal year, the university has benefited from more than $16 million in research and development grants. These grants have come from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Education, the National Science Foundation, and the U.S. Department of Energy. And therefore, our university researchers are well-funded to break ground on life-changing research. For example, Dr. Sanjaya and his student researchers are studying the removal of selenium and nitrate 
from wastewater produced in the electric power generation process. They are also researching sea storage compound and bioenergy with the goal of enhancing crop growth on reclaimed surface mine lands. See, such research has the potential to make a worldwide impact on food production and supply as well as water quality. Professor of Biology, Dr. Umesh Reddy, continues to advance in his agricultural research and is part of a national team of 20 scientists working to accelerate the development of disease-resistant crops using applied genomics. Dr. Reddy is one of a handful of scientists across this nation that has positioned their universities to be a part of creating a DNA sequencer for agricultural research. Thanks to promoting excellence in education and research grants, PEER, faculty across our campus and beyond are conducting more research. When PEER was launched in 2014, 12 grant applications were submitted with seven faculty members participating in the program. In academic year 2016, 26 applications were submitted with 17 faculty members participating in the program. We have now raised the total funding of PEER to $150,000. And the best part is that more faculty across every college are participating in research and they are taking that research into the classrooms. Continued investment in research is how we will become a premier research university. That is why I am proud to share that the university is working toward establishing an office of undergraduate research over the next two years. I want to commend both Vice President Dr. McMeans and Provost Dr. Jazaria and their respective offices for lending and leading the collaborative effort for this important element of our vision. Our students, as we know, are attracted to state for some very practical reasons. We are affordable, we are conveniently located, but not just here in the Valley, but to the entire East Coast of the United States of America. And we have nationally recognized award-winning academic programs in business administration, biology, and social work. Our university accreditation, as well as our program-specific accreditations in business administration, economics, and education are a testament to the quality education state provides its students. I am proud to say that our brisk pace of expanding access to a quality education continues. This fall, we launched four fully online programs, enabling students to learn where and when it is most convenient for them. I would like to take a moment and recognize Dr. Tom Kitty, director for the Center of Online Learning, as well as each member of the Online Learning Advisory Committee and all of our online faculty for their successful implementation of WVSU Online. Thank you for expanding access and opportunity to more students than ever before possible. <laughs> Through a unique collaboration with WVU, we now offer students a Master of Social Work degree. This fall, 11 students began their path to earning a graduate degree in social work. I am confident, under the leadership of Chair Dr. Brenda Wamsley, this program will continue to grow and provide our greater community with individuals who will make an impression on many lives. Thank you for your efforts, and we know that our students will be successful and go out and do great things. I have no doubt 
that we have assembled the best faculty to educate our students. With a, an American chemical, chemical Society fellow in Dr. Michael Fultz and a Fulbright scholar in Dr. Sonia Armstrong at the helm of our classrooms. The accolades are beginning to showcase what we here at State have always done. And that is that we have a world-class faculty who delivers a world-class education. Their expertise, their prominence, and their scholarship continues to keep State in the national conversation. And it is always nice when others began to take notice and realize how good you really are. Due to their expertise, our faculty are recruited for prestigious leadership positions. Take Dr. Walter Stroop. The associate professor has been appointed to the governor's committee on crime, delinquency, and correction. This committee strives to reduce and prevent crime and improve public safety in the state by coordinating the efforts and impact of the criminal justice system. Well, let's talk about Joshua Martin, an art professor who was chosen by Charleston Main Streets to design and paint a mural on Charleston's west side on Tennessee Avenue, entitled Welcome to Elk City. Executed in stages, the project allowed participants from the local community to add their own creative elements to this work of art. Through such engagements, we have together transitioned this institution from a best-known secret to a well-known value. West Virginia State University is now a place where students come from all over the world to live, to learn, and excel. We are increasingly becoming a first choice university. Under the direction of Vice President Kimberly Osborne, our creative marketing will showcase our strengths and the excitement and the pride in state. I want to recognize our university relations team for their hard work in redesigning our website. You have likely noticed that our new homepage is specifically designed to engage future students and their parents. While our university relations team has won a national tele award for our most recent commercial, and our extension communications team won a gold award from the Association of Communication Excellence for the design and content of the toolbox, Destination Beautification, they are in no means slowing down. This fall, our marketing is moving into new outlets and in new ways that we have not done before. As a significant part in this change, our marketing team will now have the ability to better use analytics and data to help us reach our goals. Through agile marketing that is responsive and timely, we will be able to deliver an image and reality that our constituents are seeking. I have directed our marketing team to drive the enhancement of the university's brand, which includes promoting the university's visual identity, guarding its reputation, reinforcing its core values, and spotlighting its high demand programs and our highly skilled and valued graduates and the faculty and staff that teach them. Over the past few months, I have had the pleasure of traveling across the state of West Virginia and beyond, where I have sat in the homes of so many of our wonderful alumni. I have listened to their heartfelt testimonies of how state profoundly changed their lives. However, our story and our brand are still not a prominent fixture around town. And that is something that I am committed to changing. But I need your help. I'm 
asking you to help increase the visible brand of state. The next time you are out and around town, you're traveling across the country, you're at a sporting event, you're hanging with your friends, you're having a meal, I'm asking you to wear your WVSU gear. I am challenging our students and our alumni, our faculty, and our staff, our friends, and our supporters to openly and proudly display your support for state. See, there's no question that state is a special place that produces special people. People who live life to the fullest, who blaze trails where others fear to go, who set self-expectations that far exceeds the average person's imagination. Our alumni are change agents. Katherine Johnson, a 1937 West Virginia State graduate, is one such individual. During her remarkable 33-year career with NASA, Katherine calculated the launch windows for America's first human spaceflight verified the calculations for John Glenn's historical orbit, and calculated the trajectory of Apollo 11 flight to the moon. In 2016, West Virginia State University bestowed upon her an honorary doctorate degree. And last year, President Barack Obama awarded Catherine the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. Her historical mathematical equations may have launched America to win the space race, but it was West Virginia State University that launched her passion for mathematics and her drive to achieve her dreams. And we are so excited that this winter, through a major motion picture, Katherine Johnson will become a household name. Our alumni, in his or own remarkable way, has a story of change and impact. Today, many alumni and friends have answered the call of service and have shared their time, their talent, and their treasures with West Virginia State University. Our alumni are engaged on this campus and in their hometowns helping to recruit students, and they are adding value to every environment they enter. Our friends are supporting our community service efforts, such as CARES Day. And it's no secret that our alumni and friends have made history for this university. I am profoundly thankful for every individual, corporation, business, and organization who helped us achieve our first ever campaign. Realize the promise, deliver the future delivered over and above, above our fundraising goal with $19.7 million raised. And that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Through your generosity, we have been able to improve the living and learning experience for so many of our students. In these tough economic times, we must continue the momentum that was launched with our capital campaign. I am proud to say that membership into the President's Circle has more than doubled from 154 in 2013 to 312 in 2016. During my most recent presidential tour, when I met so many new friends in Atlanta, Washington, D.C., New York, Florida, and Cleveland. Their exhilaration for state is second to none. I challenge them to lead the charge of expanding the new membership for the President's Circle. And to every alumni, friend, supporter, and community member in this room today, I ask the same of you, and I challenge you to join us in expanding the President's Circle and paying it forward. 
West Virginia State University alumnus and retired United States Army Brigadier General Walter F. Johnson III is committed to paying it forward. And for his and his wife's dedication to state, he received the inaugural Career Exemplar Award from the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities this past year. General Johnson was one of 19 recipients of the award given to distinguished alumni representing 1890 land grant institutions who achieved excellence in navigating their career and serving as mentors to other traditionally underrepresented students pursuing similar career paths. Now is our time to dream big, to act bold, to give generously, and to help make dreams come true. Our alumni, you are role models, mentors, and our students look to you for what is possible. Every alumni matters, and every alumni can make a difference. See, I know firsthand the impact a mentor can have on a young person. I credit a great deal of my success to many of my long-time mentors. As a first-generation college student, these men and women provided me the support, the resources, and the nurturing I needed along my journey. And the situation of students in this room and across this campus, they are no different than your experience and mine. And that's why, just as folks have stepped up to help us, I am challenging our alumni, our faculty, our friends, and our supporters to join the university in helping us to pay it forward so our students have the same prospects and possibilities that we have had thanks to this great university. State has been a miracle for many of us. State has afforded many of us a quality of life and opportunities that we may not have otherwise seen or have been privy to. She has been a beacon of hope and a safe haven for so many. Now, not everyone can be as fortunate as I am and to serve as president of this amazing university. But everyone can make a difference and everyone can have an impact. Each of us are a small link in a large chain. And together, we can do for state what the naysayers believe is impossible. Because of the generosity of so many alumni and friends, our students have benefited tremendously. And while a speech like this typically focuses on the what's and the how's, to me, it is truly important to focus on the why. Why should we care about state? Why should we invest in state? It's simple. Because state has given so much to each of us. See, I believe strongly in this university, in our mission, and our ability to change lives. But it's also because of all the dedicated alumni and friends I have met since my arrival. I am confident that our best days are ahead. And I believe this because over the past few months, I have seen the hopeful faces of students entering this university with dreams of a better life and a better tomorrow. And I have seen on the other side alumni who have achieved the American dream. So the question for those of us in this room is how can we, all of us, together, transform the lives of currently enrolled Yellow Jackets? Thus, I ask the question, what impact do you want to have? And what legacy are you leaving? The collective state family is an amazing group of people dedicated to education and service. The stories and accomplishments of our students, our faculty, our staff, and our alumni that I have shared with you today, those stories, they inspire me. And I hope they inspire you. My fellow Yellow Jackets, a brighter future is ours to write. Let's begin a new chapter together. 
And let's start writing that chapter today. Thank you. I hope you enjoy homecoming. And go State!